So hello everyone and thanks for connecting. It's a pleasure for me to be here one more year, this time in this inusual format, but I hope you are enjoying it. Okay, so I'm going to present today one of our latest where we monitor the COVID crisis using high resolution transaction data from BBVA, the second largest bank in Spain for those that are abroad with presence in many other countries too. The COVID pandemic, as you as you know, has meant a full stop in the way in which economies measure the impact of a shock, with few precedents in the history and also all over the world, like the, the one that we are living nowadays. In, the, in this context, the importance of using high frequency data to measure and track the impact of the virus spread is crucial. Knowing the cost, it, it is causing and how they are distributed across time and space. Moreover, from a policy making point of view, it is quite useful to track uh, the, the impact of the lockdown measure implemented in some countries, helping governments and public institutions to design adequate policies to combat the, the virus effects. Well, the aggregated and anonymized data, the financial data, is a very illustrative example of it. Particularly in our case, using transaction data from BBVA, we are going to collect all the payments that are done with a credit and debit card of a BBVA client, as well as all the payments collected by BBVA point of sales, to construct a proxy of consumption and to track it on real time and high definition. Of course, the most important part of this project is to check the robustness of our data for the analysis, assuring their quality and representativeness over the whole period. This is indeed, as you can imagine, the most time consuming part in the project, where we put special care to process, clean and transform and test also all the data. Once you have it ready for the analysis, the potential is huge. We have been working during more than two years in an ambitious project to measure national accounts in real time and high definition using this financial data, data from cards, credit and debit cards, but also data from, from the bank accounts, from transfer. From this big project that I mentioned, different applications arise. And today I'm presenting one of these applications to use card spending for now casting aggregate consumption, as well as to make granular economic analysis with this high definition data. Moreover, we are going to use this develop indicator to understand better what is happening nowadays. How is the expenditure adjustment during the COVID crisis across countries, but especially in our case in Spain. Okay, so let's go to that part of monitoring consumption or card spending in real time and high definition. Here you have maps where you can see the transactions that are done using a credit or debit card of BBVA across geographies, particularly in Spain, Turkey and Mexico. These are three countries where the bank has a high market share. In the case of, of Spain, for example, we are using for this project 2.1 billion of transactions and for the rest of countries where BBVA operates, that are Argentina, Colombia, Peru, Mexico, US, especially the southern part and Turkey, we are using almost 4 billion of transactions. Going further into the data, as I said before, we are going to take all transactions of BBA operated point of sales and the ones that are done with BBA credit and debit cards. Of course, avoiding duplicates and double counting. The time span that we are studying is for 1st of January of 2019 until the end of June of 2020. Nevertheless, for the presentation, you are going to see graphs that are updated even until the first week of November. So that's, that's good for, for getting some insight of what is happening nowadays. Well, this table collects the descriptive statistics for the case of Spain, where you can see these 2.1 billions of transactions that I was mentioning before. 
And all this data you have with a really great detail. You have geographical detail, even you have the postal code where, where the transaction was done. You have sectorial detail. We are working with uh, 76 different categories of consumption. And moreover, from the point of view of the cardholder, we are considering 6 million of cardholders with information about their home postal code, education level, and age. And for sure, I would like to highlight that all the data is anonymized and encrypted. So there's no any issue with the security of our clients. It is important also to notice that we have all this type of data with this great detail for all the countries where BBVA operates. That, that I said before, they are Argentina, Colombia, Peru, Mexico, US, and Turkey. So as you can imagine, we are considering a, a very high universe of data that we can incorporate in our analysis. We carefully need, before using for the analysis, to test if this BBA expenditure data is a coincident indicator of consumption. Could we use it for the analysis? Are we sure that the data is mimic uh, and replicating the official figure, both in the aggregate and at the mi uh, micro level, in order to take into account that we don't have problems with market share or with other type of things? Well, here you can find the case of Spain, where we compare our built indicator with the monthly retail sales indicator published by the National Institute in the case of Spain. This is a really good proxy of consumption that they are publishing on a monthly basis, and we aggregate the data just to see how it behaves. And here you have the results. The results are pretty, pretty good. You see that the correlation is quite high. Actually, it is higher than 95% in all the uh, series that the National Institute of Statistics provides for, for the case of Spain. That is at national level, by regions, and also by distribution classes or the size of the merchant. Okay? These are the data that is released by the National Institute of Statistics. And here you have for all of these series the correlation and the comparison with our data. So uh, this is for the case of Spain, but we have done it for all the countries. And if you go to our uh, web page, you can find the details as well as the comparison with other series that could be of your interest. So once we check that the indicators are robust and we can trust on them, there are two main uh, important advantages of using our data that I would like to highlight. First of all, it is the time advantage. This is really, really important. We can have fast and timely answers on what is happening in each moment on consumption, given the high frequency of our data. Getting the BBVA expenditure indicator between one and three months ahead than the release of official data. You know what I what I mean? This is a really, really important issue. This time advantage is especially important for emerging economies where the official data is more scarce. So you see here in the slide that for the case of uh, US and uh, Spain, that, that's good that we are anticipating almost one month, but for the case of emerging economies, this is crucial. And moreover, the other important issue is that our transaction data has a great detail that is for sure not available in the official data, like consumption categories or geography, as I mentioned before in the previous slide. But also, we have other features that we can explore, like the disaggregation between virtual and physical point of sales. So we can compare the evolution of e-commerce versus offline one. We have also information about the ATM withdrawals that could be used as a proxy of the use of cash, comparing it with card payment. Or moreover, we can know if these payments are done with a national or a foreign card. 
in order to identify tourist flows. That is really, really important in the case of Spain, but also in, in other geographies. So here in the small graphs that you see in the slide below, you can see some of the examples that we have for Spain and for other countries with this analyzed data. So this is important that you take into account that uh, with, the, with the data that we build, we can replicate official figures, but we can go one step ahead. We can have it before the release of the official figures, and moreover, we can have it in a great detail that the official figures is not providing for many countries. Once we have it clear, so let's go to see the results. This is the important part. Here we are going to present a global overview of the impact of the COVID on expenditure patterns across countries. So here, for each of the countries that we are considering, we aggregate all transactions at a daily frequency, and then we compute the moving average 14 days and the year-on-year -year growth rates that are, we are comparing how we are nowadays, comparing with the same date one year ago in 2019. And the data, we are presenting it in percentage point deviation from the pre-COVID period in order to take into account that uh, data is nominal and different countries experience different inflation rates. Then you should interpret these areas as the following. This is the total percentage point decline or variation in daily year-on-year -year growth relative to the average growth observe it before the crisis, okay? So uh, what these global pictures tell us? So here we can observe uh, the cross-country heterogeneous impact of the pandemic, right? Because you see that there was a large and important decline in global year-on-year -year growth starting at mid-March in most of the geographies. And then we have a global recovery since the end of April, more or less. But the, the speed of recovery was different depending on the country. Thus, for example, here at the early May, we see that Mexico or US saw a relative mild decline of 30, 20% respectively. But if we go, for example, to uh, Peru or, or, or Spain, you see that they are still suffering at this day really large declines of 60% below the observed period uh, in the pre-COVID crisis. Regarding the recovery dynamics, it seems that the slowest recoveries are in South America, in Argentina and Colombia particularly. In the case of Peru, we observe something that is also interesting because you see that it was the most hit economy in March and the recovery started later comparing with the rest of economies, but then the trend was really stable over time, reaching at the end of October positive growth rates. The improving trend in Spain, for example, was dif different. You see that it behaves well at the end of August, when the epidemic situation worsened or indicators also does it. Okay? This information could be summarized in this bar graph that we have here, where you see the month average for October, September, September and April. That was the worst ma uh, month. And here you see that the only country that is growing in October, taking into account this, this average over the, the whole month, was US. OK? so. We also test uh, regarding this data using cross correlations that the larger declines in Spain detours are associated, as we can expect, with the lockdown measures imposed by governments. Okay, so here the, the case of Spain is a good example of it. Here we, here we can observe the evolution of, of Spain, and you see that the week before the lockdown, we have an increase in, in expenditure in anticipation to it. And then we have, again, a really important and a sharp decline, about 60% uh, in year-on-year -year growth rates, 
where mobility and commercial activity was re restricted in that moment. But then you, you see that it remained depressed until in the same level until the end of May, where the lockdown was partially relaxed. And at that point, we see the recovery. But what is happening? That the easing of restrictions for the four further consecutive phases was implemented in different provinces at different times. So we need to take it into consideration because, because uh, given the healthcare conditions, the recovery is going to be different. And the impact of these measures on expenditure is going to be different too. So in the next slide, we are going to exploit this differential timing in intensity of easing across provinces. Here, uh, we saw these event study graphs centered around the implementation of a phase one, two, and three, comparing with provinces that stay in another, in another phase. That is, we are showing the average growth rates of provinces that goes to phase one, two or three, and we are comparing with provinces that stay in a more restrictive phase. Then visually, you can see that there is evidence that uh, there is a divergence in expenditure paths of both group of provinces. And this uh, difference seems to be more important in the case of phase one and phase two, because cities are starting to diverge in the, uh, taking into account these dates. Okay, so for, for testing that, we did some regressions, and indeed the results demonstrate that phase one and two are the ones that contribute the most to the strong recovery of the economy. While phase, two, uh, phase three sorry, does not generate any statistically significant differential effects. Therefore, we can conclude, seeing this data, that the shutdowns are more damaging than capacity restrictions, which is a really important insight from a policymaking point of view. Okay, so we also explore in this time span the evolution of the expenditure by category and by income and how they are related. Okay, so uh, we are going to compute the consumption share in each of the 76 categories we have across Madrid postal codes. So this is really disaggregated and granular data. And then we correlate this set of individual categories with official data of income per capita from the household budget survey in Spain. And the, the, the main target of this exercise was validating that the card spending could be used also as a proxy of income. And results showed us that we can do that. So here in this table, what you can see is how income affects consumption by categories across Madrid and by income groups. So categories that are in red means that they, are, uh, they were restricted during the lockdown. And what are the main insights of it? Uh, what we found is that higher income postal codes or neighborhoods are associated with more spending on restaurants, health, well-being, travel, and time-efficient transportation, like the case of taxis and parking. However, lower income postal codes are associated with spending on essential goods related with food and also with the household care, and also with consumption of tobacco, that is also interesting to know. This provides an important insight into how different uh, people uh, and income groups are using uh, and redistributing expenditures in order to, to take into account their trade-offs between time and money, how they invest in personal health, and also in, in leisure or entertainment, for example. So in this sense, this data is, is, is also a good proxy of a, of a survey or time use data that is really important in, in economy. So we are seeing that the, the data is really rich for getting different insights and for, for doing this ta different type of analysis. Now we are going to, to see and to study the expenditure reallocation during the crisis. 
This is also quite interesting to see. We analyze here the chain of expenditure patterns across categories during the lockdown and the easing process. And what, what we are finding? We are finding that consumption shares were quite stable in the, in the week before the lockdown, as you can see here in the graph. But then what is happening? That a clear reallocation patterns emerge. When the lockdown was implemented, spending on food and on hypermarkets grows significantly. And these two sectors were supposing half of all the expenditure by late March. At the same time, other sectors like fashion or expenditure in leisure collapse totally. Moreover, in the same manner that in the aggregate spending, we observe a recovery once the restrictions begin to be eased, we are going to observe the same in this composition of consumption, that it started to return gradually to the previous allocation since the beginning of May. Taking into a look to the growth, uh, growth rates during the last month, that is the bar graph that you have here, we check uh, that food expenditure, for example, is still increasing at 40% comparing with the pre-COVID crisis. And among the most uh, stagnant categories, we have expenditure in, in travel and accommodation that are uh, the main categories associated with tourism that you know that is almost zero, at least at the beginning of, of the year. And then we see also large declines in other, in other categories that are associated also with leisure and, and entertainment. Okay, so we also study, this is another important issue, taking into account all this granular data, we are going to see how these spending patterns have been affected during the lockdown for different groups within these micro areas in Madrid, considering again the postal code. Here you can see the aggregate evolution of expenditures for postal code group by five average income quintiles. Okay, so this is also this is also really really important to take into account because here in this data uh, you see that the evolution uh, in absolute values and also uh, in year on year growth rates that is the second graph uh, give us a really important insight. And what is that? That uh, apart from the important fall uh, in consumption observed at mid May at mid March, sorry and the recovery and with the implementation of the easing restrictions, we are observing that different groups of income are affected differently uh, taking into account where they live. Okay, so the fall in total expenditures as well as the relative fall in total expenditures is larger in the richer neighborhoods. Okay, so this is this is the this is the reason that is behind that could be that these richer uh, people have a really different patterns of consumption comparing with the rest. They are consuming more luxury goods than uh, essential goods. So the, the, the redistribution of consumption was more important for them than for the rest. So here you see in the blue line that they were the most affected one. And the recovery, that's true, it affects all income groups but uh, it was most important for them because they again uh, started to go to restaurants uh, and to spend money in these non-essential goods and this insight could be also see in in a previous slide that we were commenting before so here you see that the most restricted activities that are in red in this table was the ones that affect more these high income high income categories or high income neighborhoods so for this reason this was the, the the population that was most affected by the covid crisis at least in consumption 
For sure, there are other variables that we should take into account for in, in the economy for having a, comprehen a comprehensive impact of, of the virus, but this was a really, a really important one. Okay, on the other hand, uh, taking into account the importance of mobility patterns dur during this COVID crisis, we, al we, we also construct a, a car expenditure indicator based on the uh, BBA expenditure or spending done in categories related with transportation. The idea behind, behind it is that if individuals spend money on these categories of consumption, we are considering that they do so because they want to move. So according to this idea, or um, series should be correlated, for example, with the movement captured by mobile phone based measure that we have a, a lot of uh, public data for analyzing. So taking in, into account, we compare our uh, indicator proxy of uh, transportation or, or mobility using spending in transportation with the Google Mo Mobility data that they are providing uh, in their web page. And what they found is that there is a very tight relationship between the two series, especially during the lockdown. Since card spending on transportation tracks mobility during the lockdown really, really well, we are going to explore this heterogeneity across Madrid postal codes in mobility, okay, during this period. That could be also really, really interesting. So what we can see in the second graph? So in the second graph, we see the evolution of mobility in Madrid using this information by postal code and by income group. One of the results that can be summarized in this graph is that the evolution of spending in transport by income design is also really different. For example, for the uh, poorest uh, people, we see that the decrease in this spending on, on transport categories was lower than the one for the high income people. So what is, what is that? And what is also interesting to observe? that these differences is more important during the working days. So it means that uh, people are uh, using transport because of, of work that is and not because of preferences. And this is the uh, lower income groups. So using this, this data and this insight that we can see in this graph, Another another question arises, and moreover, given that we have this data really, really granular, we disaggregate all this data, and we were asking with type of transport groups uh, and transport methods people were using, and what we found uh, is that the adjustment in all the transport methods for high income household was significantly more important than for the lowest income, but especially in public transport. So this is also a, a really important issue because it is not just that the lower income household are traveling more during the lockdown. They are doing so also in the most risky transport methods, okay? So uh, what is the, the natural question that emerged from this? Is uh, our lower income population relative more exposed to infection than the richest one? This is, also, this is also an exercise that we did in order to see if in fact, these lower income postal codes travel relative more than those of higher income postal codes during the lockdown and uh, so they are using public transportation, at least in Madrid, that were the, the city where we use this really granular information and, and postal codes and could be relatively more exposed to infection. We run a simple, uh, simple regression model to see how these mobility patterns impact on disease incidents. And we are going to try to explain the new COVID uh, cases from total spending on urban transportation of BBA clients 
In the model, we introduce a lag in order to take into account that there is a, a time for incubation of the of the virus. There are the lies in, in testing and also the lies in the release and of official figures of confirmed cases. So uh, we introduce this this lag to take it into account. We introduce other variables for control, like a uh, lockdown, that is also uh, important to take into account, or uh, some fixed effects uh, related to the postal code, which controls income, age structure, or the distance to the to the center of, of Madrid. And what we, we found after doing this, this model is that there is a statistically significant effect of urban transport spending on carbon cases. That is, the, the, the results uh, supports the idea that traveling in Madrid during the epidemic and the lockdown increase the probability of infection. This is a really, really important uh, issue also from the uh, policymaking point of view. So, once we have it and we know that the, the mobility matters in the probability of infection, we are going to, we have an, another question and we are going to do another exercise that is, according to, to this second graph, how much of the COVID cases in the lower income neighborhoods would fall if households could reduce their urban transport expenditure to the level of the richest people, the richest design in our sample. To do this contrafactual exercise, we impose to the lower income design the urban transport expenditure reduction of the top income design. And here you have the results. You see that the percentage of people or, or that is infected or COVID uh, cases will reduce significantly especially for these poorer people. So this is also uh, really important to, to know. So finally, we are going to briefly comment the latest evolution of card spending in the case of Spain, by nationality, by sector of activity, by provinces, in order to give you the most updated and comprehensive image of what is happening nowadays since the end of summer to, to, to the yesterday, well, not yesterday, but the first uh, week of November. So uh, you can have all these figures in your, in your mind and ask, asking me questions if you have any doubt. All these type of graphs are interactive. And here, what you can see, for example, if you, if you go to, to this graph, you see the expenditure by nationality. You see, a expenditure that is done with a foreign card comparing with a national card. Also, you see, expenditure that is done in a point of sales that is physical, in a merchant that is physical, or a virtual one. And which are the results that you have here? That the highest impact of the crisis for sure was for foreign people. You see, here in that period, that was uh, when the, um, the virus arrived and we have the lockdown, that a uh, foreign, foreign expenditure was the most hit uh, category, and then how it started to recover. If you see the, this, this type of data, again, you see that during the uh, 4th of May, where we started in phase one, in the easing process, National expenditure started to, to recover really fast, but, but it was not the case of a foreign expenditure of tourist people. We have that in the in the worst moment, they they was a, the decrease in, in growth rates that was almost to 95%. So it was a lot. And right now, again, we are still really, really bad in that in that figure. We have a, an, a decrease of 71%. Okay, but however, with information about this uh, national consumption, you see that th this is the one that is leading the recovery of consumption. It started to increase 
at the beginning of June, especially keeping a positive growth rates until the second half of October, when we have the second wave of, of cases in, in Spain, and then it started to reach again negative values. Starting uh, and this, uh, the data that we have nowadays, it is negative, but uh, again, it is close to, to the zero part area. Okay, and then another important issue is the online consumption, the e-commerce. You see that it is growing since the end of summer compared with previous year, that is in year on year growth rates, reaching at the beginning of uh, November an increase of more than 50%, and nowadays it is around 20% in the case of Spain, which is also really, really important. Okay. So focusing right now on the evolution of sector of activity, in the case of Spain, you see also different patterns in the, in the recovery and also during the, the crisis, during the, the worst part, uh, I should say, okay? So here you see how a consumption, for example, of accommodation and, and travel agencies were the most uh, hit uh, categories. It seems that during the summer, they started to recover, as you can see here in that period that we have here. But then at the end of summer, it started again to, to have a bigger decline in these growth rates, given that we have again the second wave and it was really, really important. If you go, for example, to the case of restaurants, it also, let me put it like this one, it it is also really interesting uh, the pattern of, of the evolution of bars and restaurants that you see that since um, mid-October they started to decrease significantly. So the, the, the piece of the decline was higher than, for example, in, in accommodation or in other categories like laser. laser. This is like something that um, it's interesting to analyze why you, we observe that. And it is a common pattern across most of the, of the communi communities and provinces that we are analyzing. But what happened with other categories of consumption, like for example, food that we see that increased a lot during the lockdown because people were consuming at home everything. So it is reflected on, on the data. And then we have also, for example, that is interesting to see the expenditure in, in home equipment that you have here, that is furniture. So we see that after the lockdown and the easing of restrictions, people started to consume more and spend more money in having a good material and good equipment at home for teleworking or for whatever they want, but they realize, they notice that they are going to spend more time at home. So probably it's good to spend some money on it and it is reflected in our data. And right now, again, the category that is increasing a lot regarding to and comparing to previous year is food because probably pre previous year we were distributing our, our expenditure uh, for, for food at home, in restaurants, in the uh, workplace, whatever. But right now we don't have so many possibilities. So it is reflecting on, on the data. On health, we also have an important increase comparing with, with the a year before and also on technology that they are uh, growing at 20 percent this is also interesting to take into account okay if we go to see the what happened uh, by province here you have for the case of spain for the uh, 52 provinces that we have how was the evolution comparing it across time and across geographies and you see the important shock of the of the crisis in in late March, and you see how was the recovery, okay? And all this data that is available also uh, for analyzing and comparing with with other uh, data in in our web. Page. You see that um, 
you have a, a, well just let me uh, say that here that dark blues means a uh, lower growth so here you see that the impact especially during the first half of april was the most important issue and then the recovery was different you see that the most hit uh, parts were the most tourists one like the islands and then the big cities madrid barcelona uh, valencia and if you compare the the current moment with the previous one you also see really important differences you you know see that we are in a second wave of the pandemic and the number of uh, COVID cases, infection uh, rates and deaths are really important. But from an economic point of view, considering consumption, the effects are quite different. And this is because we don't have the lockdown. That was the measure that um, avoids to, to, consu to consume, okay? So now here information by country this is a cross country comparison uh, let me let me mention that this information is available in interactive graphs in our web page and moreover we can send you the data upon request for uh, academic purposes or research purposes okay so if you are interested in this type of data we are sharing it with you just go to our web page you have here the link and we will give you the data so here again you see that the the recovery in by country is especially important in countries like uh, turkey or or for example peru that was a, a best performer during during this last month and you see that spain is on the tail you have also in our web page information about the evolution of consumption in online and physical one atm withdrawals compared with total purchases and you have it for all the countries so here you see for example that in countries like turkey the importance of the e-commerce without a doubt the crisis support uh, suppose a really important point for digitalization and digital trends, especially in emerging economies, and it is also reflected in the data. You have, for example, Mexico, that also the, the evolution of this e-commerce was really, really important. And for example, uh, in the case of US, you have also this important um, online uh, expenditures because people cannot consume or consume less outside but for sure the highest growth rates was in in emerging economies and finally uh, let me give you this information that is also for comparing across countries and across sectors what is happening this is really good to see the the recovery and the evolution of the of consumption taking into account the impact of the virus and you see in spain that the impact was really high but the recovery started uh, at uh, beginning of may and was good comparing with other countries for example uh, in the case of mexico that's true that the the decline was lower but the recovery was also um, lower okay so you see for example peru that started uh, with uh, really dark uh, colors that means with low values for growth rates and then it started to really light colors so the recovery materialized in this economy so after all of this information um and before going to, to the takeaways I, I would also like to give you some some important well, insights regarding this type of data. We, we know that the, this transaction data, uh, we have proved that could be useful for, for the society, for assess, assessing the economic conditions, capturing really relevant patterns of spending in real time and high definition at aggregate and at, at the micro level. And this could be especially useful for policymakers and researchers. So in, in the commitment of BBVA to help the society and to combat the crisis, we are saying frequently 
this granular data for Spain and for, for other countries with public institutions to help them in their policy decisions. Okay, and as I said before, this is especially important for emerging economies where they don't have so much data. We study the impact of the COVID crisis on expenditure, how was the initial shock, how was the recovery and the expenditure adjustment across geographies and income groups and also across categories of consumption. So, uh, and finally, we also test that this transportation spending indicator that we constructed with our data could be also a really good indicator to explain the disease incidents, particularly across income groups that we see that varies a lot. So with that, um, I finished the, the presentation. Thank you everyone for your attention. It was a pleasure to, to share this type of insights with you. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have.